I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Craig Hagen. It's that time again, Rama Praise. Glad to have you with us today. You know, today, Craig is with me again, and he we are doing a message that he's preached at our uh, called, men's arms, con men's called arms Men's Conference. Last year. And so what are you talking about, Craig? It's called the attitude of a winner. You know, so many times you see a, a, maybe a team that's not very good playing another team. You know, they already lost the game before they even start. I mean, th their attitude is we're going to lose this game. They don't even, even try. You know, but a lot of times we do the same thing in the game of life. We, we as Christians, we, we think that we are a loser. Now, the reason we think they're a loser is because the devil tries to tell us that we're a loser. Yeah. But we need to understand not only are we a winner through Jesus Christ, but we, under, we need to have that attitude. We need to think like a winner. And, you know, there's a difference between thinking like a winner because the Bible says we have already won the victory through Jesus Christ. Not we're going to win the victory, but we've already won. So we have have to put on the mind of Christ and think like Jesus thinks. You know, we had let the greater one come out and stop seeing ourselves as the underdog, but yeah. seeing ourselves um, as the winner. And then sometimes too, we try to do things in our own strength. But you know, you know, we, we heard a story about Michael Jordan through, through my my friend Corey Williams, who yeah. played with Michael Jordan, and they said. When the games got tough, they want to make, you know, Michael said, just give me the ball. That's right. Just give me the ball. Well, we need to do the same thing with Jesus. Let's give him the ball. You know, when, when yeah. times get tough, instead of you trying to, to figure out how you're going to do it, just let go and let God. Just give Jesus your ball and, you know, cast your cares upon him. Yeah. Amen. So let's go to the message, the attitude of a winner. The attitude of a winner. I think that's, you know, everyone that positions herself for victory has to have an attitude of, of a winner. And so I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 4, 4. And I'm gonna read from the New Living Translation. I read quite a bit from more modern translations because I think it gives a little bit better aspect on, on some things. And it says this, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. I want you to underline, focus on the word that says already. It says already. So many people are praying that they're gonna win a victory, but the Bible says. See, my grandfather taught me, what does the Bible say? God says that I believe in the settles. The Bible says that we have already won a victory. Amen. Now, there is a difference between people who are winners and people who are losers. There's a mental difference. And you know, winners never lose and losers never win. But, um, you know, if, if I name off a, a list of athletes, you know, let's just say, off the top of my head, obviously Michael Jordan, um, Tom Brady, um, Tiger Woods, going to, I'm an automobile guy, so Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, um, you know, and you can go on and on. And every one of those, when I mention those, you think winner, 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 winner. How about Dan Marino? Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. But, he, but if I hear his, say his name, pe people think winner. But he never won a Super Bowl. That doesn't matter. See, the thing about it, people think, well, if I reach the pinnacle, then I'm a winner. No, you, you have to have an attitude of a, win, of, of a winning attitude every day of your life. But here's the thing. We're not like a normal athlete the Bible says we've already won. Now, if you've already, I mean, how would you like to, to know that every time you step on a field, every time you step on a court, you have already won before the game even began? So wouldn't you play different? Wouldn't you think different? You know, championship teams, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of times teams lose to other teams because they get intimidated. Just the fact that they're playing that person, they get intimidated because they look, oh, these guys are winners. But here's the thing. Do you, a lot of times, Christians, whenever we're going through trials and tribulations and different battles, 
we think we're the underdog. Our mindset is that we're the underdog. No, the Bible says we've already won. You need to understand that you are the champion, you're not the underdog. But I don't want you to get the big head. The only reason you're the champion is the greater one lives on the inside of you. Now when you look your, yourself in the mirror, you need to see a champion, not a loser. And the reason some of us struggle is because we have this losing mentality. In fact, sometimes we'll have you know, something going on, we're like, this always happens to me. You know, every time things are going great, so it happens. I mean, you know, I, I just can't get ahead. You know, Christians say those kind of things. How, how can we say those things when the greater one lives on the inside of me? See, I, and I've done it before. Um, the way I think about it is I think in the superhero realm, Superman, all right? So, um, you know, when I have the natural mindset, I'm like Clark Kent. I'm just, an, I'm just an average guy. But whenever I put on the mind of Christ and I begin to see, you know, the world like Christ sees the world through me, I become Superman. And see, the problem is that so many Christians are, they have the capacity to be Superman, but they're still Clark Kent. And they're griping and complaining, although they have the capacity to, to do something about it, but they don't because they have to change their mindset. They have to change their attitude. They have to develop the attitude of a winner instead of the attitude of, of someone who's been defeated. You, here's the thing. You cannot lose. You cannot lose. I mean, I, mean, I mean, can you get that across your head? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we've already won a victory. So here's the thing. Some of you are praying for something you've already got. You're praying for a victory. The Bible says you've already have a victory. Why do you have a victory? Because Jesus won 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, Jesus won the battle for you. I mean, you know, and so, and, and the thing about it is, is that we have to have that attitude. Now, going back to the Old Testament, Isaiah 55, verses eight and nine, once again, reading from the New Living Translation, it says this, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So what I want you to do is I want you to put on the thoughts of God. I want you to think like God thinks, because God doesn't think like a loser. I mean, you know, if I mention the word God, we, 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 you know, he's the all supreme being. He, he's the greatest of all times. He's better than any athlete I could ever know. Name. But you, the greater one lives on the inside of you. Do you understand, just by accepting Jesus Christ as your savior, you know, you should have developed that attitude of a winner. Now here's the thing, the devil, El Diablo, you know, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, I, I talk about that a lot, but the devil is just nothing but a smack talker. And we've all faced those people. Now, now you know, there are, there's people who talk smack and there's people that can put up the smack, all right, you know, Someone like a Deion Sanders or whatever, he talked a lot of smack, but, but, but he was able to perform, all right? But then there's other guys that just talk a good game, but ultimately, they know they can't do it. And that's what the devil does to a lot of us. The devil's been defeated, but he tries to tell you, hey, you're not gonna make it. You're, you're not gonna win. You're, you're not gonna overcome. But the Bible already says that we have already won a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we've already, we already win. Now, um, 1 John 5, 4, which is um, just one page over, says it this way, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith, and who can, who, and who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. See, you know, one of the benefits of accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior is we become victorious. So we're talking about being in a position for, for victory, we'll get saved. 
Get saved and change your attitude. Now, you got to put on the mind of Christ. We have to think like Jesus thinks. And we have to let the greater one come out. You know, I said a lot of times we have the capacity, but we're too busy letting the smack talker overcome us because we, we see ourselves as the underdog. When you don't see yourself as who God, God sees you as, as, as a champion, you see yourself as an underdog, and you have to change your attitude. Because do you realize that winners walk differently than losers? Winners act differently than losers? Do you realize that winners expect to win when they get on the field? I mean, every once in a while, you know, a team will surprise, you know, you know somebody, and they're like, you know, they were surprised because this other team, they walk like winners, you know, they look like winners, you know, and usually, like I said, half the time they win their game just on intimidation alone. You know, now there are some times that these winning attitude people get the big head and they overlook a team and they get beat, all right? And, and you know, so, so we don't wanna overlook the, you know, the, the devil, but we have to realize that he's already been defeated. He's already been defeated. We don't have to try to defeat the devil. He's already been defeated. So if he's already been defeated, that means we win. Now, how do winners act? I mean, you know, Rangers just won the World Series. They were pretty excited about it. All right, you know, jumping up and down, yelling, screaming, you know, what, whatever. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you know, there was all kinds of parties going on in, in Arlington, Texas, you know, you know, like crazy. I mean, you know, people were excited. You know, when people win championships, people win, you know, you know sometimes there's some teams if they just win a game, <laughs> they get excited about it, you know, because that's how their season's gone. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, a, you know, the, the, the one game, um, you know, and so, but the thing about it is our attitude needs to change when we become a Christian. See, that's one thing, we, you know, we talk about renewing our mind, but a lot of times we don't renew our attitude. We don't change our attitude. We, we, we look at things like, like, I don't know what I'm, I mean, I've heard Christians say, I don't know what I'm gonna do. How do you not know what you're gonna do when the greater one lives on the inside of you? Amen. What you're gonna do is you're gonna let the greater one come on the outside of you. You're not gonna keep them bottled up in, on the inside. You know, it's kind of like, you know, what is it, you know, you know, like, you know um, I don't like to use this thing, but, but you can, I think about like a genie in a bottle, you know, they open up the bottle. And they, so we had to open up our, our heart and let the Lord come out. Amen. The greater one. The Bible says that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So we need to understand it. It says we have already become a victory, you know, well, won a victory. It says that, that when we got saved, we became victorious. Now, some people are, are like, not acting very victorious, you're like, Craig, you don't understand what I'm going through. No, you don't understand how, how big your God is. You don't understand you know, how, how great the, the, the greater one is. See, what happened is you're thinking about, you're thinking about your own mental mind, you know, you're thinking about your natural mind, and, you know, and the natural world is one thing, but when it comes to spiritual things, the nat nat natural laws don't matter. Natural laws doesn't, don't matter. You know, and, and it is really tough whenever, you know, like, you know, I have a degree in accounting, so, you know, it, but, you know, so I can tell you the numbers sometimes don't add up, you know, but, you know, you, you know, the Bible says only believe. It doesn't matter how tough it is because ultimately you win, all right? Um, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse four, NLT once again. It says, for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and he will give you the victory. Now, do you understand? What does the Bible say? The Bible says that God will give you the victory. It doesn't say he's praying about it. It doesn't say he's up there, you know, he's fasting and praying. And if he gets, if he gets you know, if he gets to go ahead, he's gonna help you win. Because that's how a lot of Christians act. They act like, well, I'm, God is trying to figure out if it's, if it's his will or not. You know, once he finds out if it's will, his, his will, then he'll help me. No, he says he will give you the victory. That's what the word says. I mean, it, you know, my grandfather said he's a stickler for the word. Like I said, that shirt back there, you can get it. It says that God says it. I, no, no it, it says the Bible says that I believe it, and that settles it. Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says he will give you the victory. 
So if you will have the victory, then why are you, why are you losing shouldn't even be in your mind. Winners don't lose, and losers don't win. You know, there's a lot of people that walk on a, uh, on a field with a losing mentality. They know every time they walk on the field, they're gonna lose. You can, you can see they're, they're gonna lose by just, when they walk out there, you can tell. They look like a loser. They act like a loser. You know, but between plays, they go to the huddle, and you can tell they're, they're just moping and, you know, whatever. And then, then here's the thing, whenever the score gets tipped and, and they're losing really bad, they just quit playing. Winners keep playing, and, and, and you know, you know, it's, you know it's, it's not over till it's over. Amen. Winners keep playing, and, you know, ask Tom Brady, or ask the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> I preached on that a number of times. I think that's the ultimate, you know, com- the ultimate comeback when Tom Brady came back again. That wasn't just Tom Brady, folks. It was Tom Brady and the, and the New England Patriots came back on the Atlanta Falcons. You know, it looked like there's no way they're gonna win. At halftime, you know, you know, at halftime, you're like, oh, game's over. But it wasn't over because winners win. Now, here's the thing. You know, a, a, a winner's always a winner. Even if, they, even if they lose a battle, they're still a winner. Even if you lose a ball game, you're, you're still a winner. Um, but, you know, the thing is, we win. The only thing that can really defeat you, see, you know, I, you know some people say this is the devil. No, the devil can't defeat you. It's your mentality. It's the way you think. The only way you're ever gonna lose is if you decide not to believe what the Bible says. That's the only way. And, and see, a lot of people, when they're facing different things in life, their mentality is, yeah, this is happening again. Oh man, I, 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 can't, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why a Christian says I don't, they don't know what to do. I've never figured that out. I mean, if you don't know what to do, read the Bible. You know, well, I, I don't know where to look. It's called Google. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you don't know where to look, what scripture to look, then, then type in scriptures on victory and you're gonna get these. Because I, I, I typed that in today, so I know. Um, I mean, you know, or, or scriptures on this, or scriptures on that, um, whatever. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God, this is the New King James, be God to, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you once again to understand that you have the victory through Jesus. Jesus has provided the victory, all right? I mean, you know, so, so in essence, you have an unfair advantage. Now, have you ever been playing, you know, a pickup game or whatever, and that, that, you, know, you know, the other team, has the Michael Jordan of pickup games. You know, you know, the other team, you know, they, they have one player that does so much better than everybody else. And, and, and so you're like, it's kind of unfair. Here's the thing. You have better than the Michael Jordan of pickup games. You have better than Michael Jordan on your team. Your team is loaded. It's loaded. I mean, you, you have the best player of all time on your team and sometimes you never let him on the field. Sometimes you never let him out. You keep him in a box. You know, anyone ever heard of a Jack, not, not, the, not the, the restaurant Jack in the Box, but you know, the Jack in the Box, you know, and it pops out. Some of you need to pull Jesus out of your box. You need to turn the handle. What do you mean turn the handle? You stir it up. We hope you enjoyed that message, the attitude of a winner. But you know what? Don't just enjoy the message, have the attitude of a winner. Especially, yeah. I mean, you talk about having a winning attitude. You know, that's yeah. one thing that we always talk about at Calls Arms Men's Conference, you yeah. know, is that we're a winner through Jesus Christ. So it's coming up November 7th and 8th. That's a Thursday, Friday. We're having the Calls Arms Men's Conference. Uh, our theme this year is a baseball theme called Going Over yeah. this year. You can register online at rhema.org slash CTA. It's going to be a wonderful time, you know, just to get together with a bunch of uh, men from around the country. We have people coming from, even, even some people coming from foreign countries yeah. to come enjoying a wonderful weekend with a bunch of guys. And we're excited uh, this year to have um, Coach Adrian Griffin, um, Coach Griffin, 
His um, dad's a Raymer graduate. He played in the NBA for 10 years. Then he was assistant coach, and he was actually the last place he was a head coach for the Milwaukee Bucks. Right now he's not coaching, so um, it's basketball season, but we were able to, to get him to come um, speak. And then, then we have a couple other speakers as well. It's going to be a yeah. wonderful time. Yes, sir. So come and be with us. You know, we got a special offer, Craig. It, we call it uh, the Call to Arms special offer. It's my book. Uh, it just came out in, in July. Connect, staying connected so that you can win. You know, what I talk about in this book, I, I talk about being uh, uh, designed to be connected, talking about and connected to Christ, connected to the church, connected to your place, connected to win. And, and I talk about how that many people become long rangers and isolate themselves, and therefore they don't have anybody to help them in the time of need. In fact, if you will look at some of these uh, wildlife uh, programs sometimes, it shows that the, they will not attack a whole herd. They isolate one, one of the animals and then they attack that other. And that's why, that's why you need to stay connected to a good church and so forth. But as, it's a really, it's really good, good book. And then you've got a, a, what do you call this thing? It's a USB drive. Right? Yeah. Somebody yeah. called it a jump drive. And sometimes and they call it MP3 well, format. There, there, there's, there's 10 MP3 messages on the subject of faith, which is a subject that I preach more than any, anything. Um, and so that's available for, both of those are available for a, a gift of $35 or more. If you'll just go to raymond.org, you can, you can order this call to arms um, men's conference. And you don't have to be a men to, 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 to buy these, <laughs> these products. I mean, no, no, these I mean, are good. You know, ladies these can be connected, are, and obviously, you know, ladies need to understand about it. So, we so, just called it a call to arms specialist because we're, talking about, your, we're yeah. talking about call to arms. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you can still order the, the uh, product this week. Hey, and, and you know, Raymond Bible College is, uh, is starting their spring semester, starts January the 10th. So you can apply right now. Right now. Go to rbtc.org slash apply. If you'll go there, fill out your information, give us your, your name, your address, and e um, email address and things like that. We'll contact you, let you know. We'll, we'll send you a digital packet immediately. Yeah. Then we'll contact you, let you know more about Rama, what Rama is and things like that. Plus, you can go to the website and find more information, uh, rbtc.org. Right. And we got a new music and media program that you might be interested in, and you can get that information if you go to Rama dot, Rama, rbtc.org, apply. Now, you know, you hear me all the time, and I, I talk about uh, thank you for helping us to bring hope, help, and healing to the world. Well, I'm talking about a word partner. What is a word partner? What is somebody that partners with us? Well, they pray for us. And then they send an offering in at least once a month, whatever they can afford to send to help support Rhema. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be big. A lot no. of people just give 10 or $25 a, a month. Yeah, you know, some people give a dollar or $5. But if you do what you can, when it all comes together, it helps us to, to pay for the programming, uh, for the Rhema Praise, and it goes all over the world. We get testimonies all the time. I just thought I'd explain what a Word Partner Club... Well, uh, also, a... our Word Partners actually give a scholarship to everyone who comes to Rainbow Bible Training College gets a scholarship through our Word Partners because our tuition only pays 30% of what it actually costs to come to Rhema. We keep our tuition low because we want, to, we want to train men and women to go around the world to preach the gospel. So um, please help us... Help us to train more students by joining the World Partner Club. But also, a partnership is, you know, not only do you pray for us, we pray for you yes. as well. And we always encourage you, if you guys have prayer requests, to let us know. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have special prayer partners that are praying just for our World Partner Club members. Yeah, and uh, go to rhema.org slash WPC and, and uh, sign up. We'd be, we'd be glad to have you. And one more thing I want to talk about before we close the program is... My grandfather, your, your dad, um, Brother Hagen, we call him, has his own YouTube channel. So the, the Raymond Kenneth E. Hagen YouTube channel, we have over 185,000 subscribers. People always ask, 
all the time uh, about his YouTube channel. And so, so you can go there. A lot of, lot of great messages for free of charge. You can watch a lot of messages. And we're, we're trying to put more and more um, as we can. So you can check that out. Yeah. Also, we have a Rainbow USA YouTube channel where we have all the services that are live. Plus, you can watch this program right here on the Rainbow USA YouTube channel. I know Brother Hagan never knew what YouTube was, but he has yeah. his own channel now. He's been in heaven for 20, 20, 21 years 21 now. 21 years now. Well, thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Let me ask you a question. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, it's really easy to receive him. If you'll just repeat a prayer after me in just a moment. In Romans 10, 9, and 10, it talks about confessing with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord. It talks about believing it in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, that you'll be saved. So we're going to pray a prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer, and you're going to repeat it after me with Miss Lynette. And say this with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That he was raised from the dead. That he was raised from the dead. And I believe now. And I believe now. As I confess this with my mouth. As I confess this with my mouth. And believe this in my heart. And believe this in my heart. I will be a new person in Christ Jesus. I will be a new person in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For my new life. For my new life. In Christ. In Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. If you happen to have prayed that prayer with us, we'd love to know about it. You can just write to us or email us at testimony at rhema.org and we would love to hear from you and we'll send you a, one little free book called The New Birth, talking about being born again. Welcome to the family of God. Jesus says, I have overcame the world. I, not, not I'm going to overcome the world. Not maybe if you pray enough, if you give enough, if you're good enough. It says, no, I have overcome the world. You realize that we have already been victorious through Christ Jesus. We have already won. He's already overcome the world. Faith by Craig W. Hagan. Discover the power of faith and learn how to move the challenges in your life by speaking to them. Connect, staying connected so you can win. A newly released book by Kenneth W. Hagen. God never intended for us to do life alone. Embrace the transformative power of connection. The book and the 10 MP3 messages can be yours today for a gift of only $35 or more. Just call toll free 1-888-PRAISE-8 or you can order anytime, day or night at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.